Hey horror fans, welcome back to Room 237, coming at you with another review. And yeah, this is another random review, uh, not part of any box set or... I guess it's kind of part of a marathon that I've been doing. But this is a movie that I've been after for some time. And I, the only way I found it was on Blu-ray, had to get it. And it it is part of my Karloff collection and... Many people claim this to be Karloff's greatest performance. That is The Body Snatcher from 1945. Which, yet yeah, it is based on a story by Robert Louis Stevenson, who wrote uh, The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and uh, Mr. Hyde. It's loosely based on uh, what's called the Burke and Hare Murders which was a series of 16 murders in uh, the 1830s where these two guys, uh, William Hare and William Burke, were killing people and selling their bodies to um, this guy, uh, uh, Dr. Knox, for dissection at his uh, med school. So the original story is kind of loosely based on that. The film mentions Burke and Hare and Knox as if it's in the same world. It also takes place in uh, 1830s Edinburgh, Scotland. It was direct. This was a young or early uh, directorial effort by Robert Wise who would go on to be an Oscar-winning director for both West Side Story and The Sound of Music. And it was produced by the legendary Val Luton. Val Luton was the horror producer in the 1940s. This one probably being the biggest. Of course, this is also the eighth, eighth and final film that Karloff and Lugosi were uh, uh, in together. And there's sort of a sad story as to how they came to be together in this film. And that is, at this point, I reviewed all the films to feature Karloff and Lugosi. Uh, a couple of which were universal monster films. But ones that are not monster films, like... In the 30s, there was The Black Cat and The Raven, which they were pretty even as far as importance, significance to the plot and screen time. But of course, Karloff was always the, the top billed star, sometimes even being billed Karloff, then the title, and then in little letters with Bela Lugosi, even if Lugosi was the star of the film. Here, though, and this is kind of sad, because this came out nine years before Mayla Lugosi would pass away. He was only cast in this film for namesake purposes, for exploitation. They wanted his name on the poster to sell tickets. They didn't really care about his role in the film or anything else. He has a very minor role. Even though the best scene in the film is a scene with the two of them together. And no one really cared about him on set. The only one that tried to make him feel comfortable was Karloff. It's kind of a tragic story. And I guess it was really hard for Lugosi to get into character because he had such a small role he was a sensitive man and he knew why he was cast and it really hurt it hurt his feelings so you know being treated like that it was really hard for him to really get into the character and Karloff did everything he could to make him feel comfortable so kind of a sad story but it also just shows the humanity of Boris Karloff now a film itself, this is a great movie. And I would have to agree. Uh, even though Bride of Frankenstein will always be my favorite Karloff film, as far as like a speaking role without being in makeup, 
this is the Karloff film to see. His performance is remarkable. This is him at his most evil and most uh, sinister. I mean, he is just a pridefully evil bastard in this movie. But you have other great performances by uh, uh, Henry Danielle, Edith Atwater, uh, uh, Russell Wade, and Sharon Moffat. Sharon Moffat is, I believe, the young girl. Excuse me for a moment. Friggin' nose won't stop running, no matter what I do. See if that helps. Alright. I believe the young girl idiot. That's what I wanted. And if you want to look up the real case, it's also known as um the Westport murders of nineteen twenty eight. Um <clears throat> okay, Edith Atwater plays the wife. Sharon Moffat plays the little girl. Okay. Basically, so you have Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. McFarlane, played by Henry Danielle. He's, he's a med teacher. And he hires this cab, cab man, which, of course, in 1830s Edinburgh, but 1830s everywhere, it's a horse and buggy. He's a grave robber. He digs up the bodies for Dr. McFarlane to dissect and analyze in his class. His um, top student is a guy named uh, Fetties. This is his last name. He's played by Russell Wade. And he gets mixed up in the whole deal of you know, buying the bodies and... The body snatcher is a guy named John Gray. That's Karloff, the cabman. And poor Bela Lugosi plays a guy named Joseph, who is uh, Dr. McFarlane's janitor, I guess. And at this point, I think this was really um, when Lugosi, his morphine and opiate addiction was high, you know, age had caught up with him. He he doesn't look like the charming, charismatic Lugosi that he had been some years before. And as the film goes on, Karloff, or Gray, goes from being a body snatcher, like a grave robber, to murdering, for getting these bodies. And he will stooped to blackmail and he's always popping up in um uh dr mcfarland's life excuse me <clears throat> um just to gloat because the twist of the movie which i'm gonna say spoilers right here because i don't want to spoil this movie <laughs> if you haven't seen this but you're into this era or you're into Val Luton or Robert Wise, Karloff, movies from the 40s in general, seek this out because this is a, it's as phenomenal as people told me it was. And unfortunately, even though Lugosi's role is very small, it probably is the best film to feature the both of them. Like the, the four pack that I have, which has the Black Cat, the Raven, the Invisible Man, and Black Friday. Even though Black Friday, Lugosi has a tiny one scene role that's not with Karloff. I would easily trade Black Friday and even the Invisible Ray to have had this on that set. But of course, those are, I believe, Universal. And this is RKO, so rights issues, but... This is possibly the best movie. I do really like the Black Cat and the Raven, especially the Raven, as a movie with the both of them. But I would say this is the better film in general. You do get some great directions, or direction, 
I mean, the the atmosphere is astounding. Uh, foggy streets, foggy um, alleyways. Um, the transfer on this, this is the Scream Factory edition, which it does have the reversible cover, but when you flip it, it doesn't line up quite right, so you get the front on the front. So I just keep it like this. But, uh, you know, you get, get some great scenes, like when um, Gray, played by Karloff, brings a body to McFarland. He walks through this curtain, and the camera just slowly pans in on this curtain as you hear um, exchanges being made. You also get this great scene where <clears throat> Karloff... When he's deciding to cross over into murder instead of um, grave robbing. It's after a conversation with the young assistant. <clears throat> he sees the assistant pay the street singer. And then the street singer walks away in the distance. There's like this archway. It's rainy. It's foggy. And you see her disappear into the darkness. And then you just see Karloff in his carriage following her. He disappears into the darkness. You still hear her singing, but then all of a sudden you just hear the singing stop. And just, this movie does so well at building tension and using atmosphere for scares. Brilliantly made. Wonderfully, no pun intended, executed. And it's just this really, like, a Machiavellian uh, psychological film about, like, I should have said psychological film about, like, a Machiavellian cunning and a, a ma manipulation. Karloff always has this shit-eating grin because he always has the upper hand and how he, he thrives on blackmailing and popping up in Dr. McFarlane's life because of this dark secret that he will go to the public with. And that's the twist at the end of the movie that I don't want to spoil, so I'll say spoilers. But, <clears throat> you know, it gets to the point where he does pop up everywhere just to fuck with Dr. McFarlane. And, you know, he has, like, this Jack the Ripper coat and top hat look and... He's just, he has this way of talking where he's just always smiling and laughing and he knows his way around. He knows exactly like what they're going to say, what to say to them. The scene with him and uh, Joseph the janitor played by Lugosi is a great exchange between the two. And it's the final scene you'll ever see them in together. It is kind of metaphorical for how their perceived rivalry has always been. But it's still a great scene with the two of them. And at least Lugosi is shown to kind of be the good guy. As good as anyone can be in this movie. Besides the assistant. And that is the best scene is the one with Karloff and Lugosi. But spoilers here. If you haven't seen this but you like Karloff or Val Luton or this era seat or Robert Louis Stevenson, get this immediately. And if you can get this version, the Screen Factory edition, it'll be worth it because the transfer is great. Some scenes are a little bright, so some people's faces are really um, overwhelmingly lit, but still great. Um... You get like a little eleven minute kind of talk with this um, Karloff Lugosi historian about the movie. You get a fifty three minute documentary on Val Luton, so definitely worth getting this version. So spoilers, but I can't praise this movie enough. Um, the talk of the Burke and Hare murders and Knox. Uh, you find out that um, Dr. McFarlane was 
the protege of Dr. Knox. And Karloff was doing this grave robbing to sort of pin the murders on Burke and Hare, but McFarlane was the real perp. So that's why Gray has McFarlane under his thumb. And he, he said, and it gets to the point where he's just like, you'll never get rid of me, which is a big line. And here they says, you'll never get rid of me. Because even if you pay me off and, you know, we're even, I enjoy messing with you. I enjoy being that burden in your life. And even at the end, when um, McFarlane kills Gray, he's still taunted by him and he can't get rid of him. And just a really great movie. And Karloff is superb. Definitely, I mean, he's played a bad guy a lot. But this is by far his most evil and his most sinister. I guess he loved this character so much that that scene when he goes after the street singer, since you don't see his face, they could have just got anybody to fill in for that scene. Uh, Karloff is like, no, I want to do it. That, that's my character. I'm going to do it. And all the performances are stellar. I should have mentioned this before, the spoilers, but you also do get some humanity to his character because there's this the young girl who's been paralyzed from an accident. Um, Dr. McFarland says it's possibly a tumor from damaged nerves. I can do it, and I could do it, but I'm running a school. I don't have time. <laughs> And Karloff blackmails him into doing it because we see him dropping the girl and her mom off. Uh, played by Edith Atwater. To McFarlane to see what he could do in the beginning. And he cares about this young girl. So there is some humanity. He does kill a dog in the beginning and then go on and talk about how eh, he got in the way. People care too much about dogs. <laughs> But yeah, Karloff, Karloff is just absolutely outstanding in this. And it is eerie how evil he is. Cheerfully evil. It is a shame about Bela Lugosi, but the exchange with him and Karloff is the highlight of the film. But performances across the board are great. Wonderful atmosphere. You know, you're really immersed in 1830s Scotland and the environment that it had to offer. And it feels like it's directed and produced by award-winning people or people who would go on to win awards, like Oscars, Be because of how some of the shots are done. And, you know, it does feel more artsy and well put together than others of this time. Just outstanding. This is probably my favorite horror film of the 1940s. 1945. I can't really think of any others that really stick out as truly wonderful horror films of that decade. There are a lot of great ones, but this one is the best. Definitely seek out The Body Snatcher. Wonderful film. I loved it. And the thing is, I've been so tired and overworked lately. I Since Friday, good, this is Sunday night, since Friday, it took me four attempts to watch this because I kept falling asleep. Not at all because it's boring. Not in the least bit. Just because I've been so fucking tired. that I knew the first act almost by heart by the time I finally finished it. But I finally did, and this is a prime piece to my Karloff collection, my 40s collection. Nothing but praise for this movie. Nothing but praise. I loved The Body Snatcher. Anyway, thank you for watching.